And from that moment on, he downright refused to speak to either Ricky or myself. And we let him think we don't like it. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving into r slash neckbeard stories and it actually is from the neckbeard story subreddit. Yes indeed, I saw a delicious series being posted by user Kenaren about an individual, I guess his name is Jake, and I guess he's from Philadelphia. <laughs> and you'll see why I say that when the title pops up on the screen. It's not a very imaginative name for a neckbeard. You know, maybe we could add a little spin on it. I'm taking suggestions from the comments. We're probably just going to do part one today. Get a little taste of what this dude is all about. And then see if we want to revisit the series at some future point. You know, I don't want to vet the stories because I do want to catch my first reaction. But I also don't want to, like, commit to something that I don't necessarily know if it's gonna go well <laughs> so let's see how well it goes we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then we will dive right into some neckbeard stories cringe the tale of jake from philadelphia <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's what it is i don't know why that's so funny to me it's just so straightforward Oh, I have several stories about individuals who belong on this subreddit. Ooh, tell them all. <laughs> but this one in particular focuses on a man that we will call Jake. Jake is white, in his 50s, and is quite desperate for a woman. That will become increasingly apparent as this tale unfolds. <laughs> in his 50s, boy, he's, he's an older one. He's not a neck beard, he's a gray beard. <laughs> I first met Jake a few years ago when I was working night shift at a local grocery store. He joined me during a time when the store was hiring almost anyone they could due to staff shortages. At the time, there were only two people working in the entire grocery department, myself and my manager. So when we heard that we were getting not one, but two new employees, we were happy, ecstatic even. These two employees were Jake and a girl that we'll call Ricky. Oh, I feel bad for Ricky already. <laughs> Things really started to go downhill from there. Yeah, you got to tighten up those hiring practices, man. You just letting anybody walk through the door? You see, the one who got stuck training Jake and Ricky on their first day was me. Well, yeah, the fucking manager's not going to do it. <laughs> Ricky was a delight. And I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. Ricky was my age, and she had previously worked at a huge retail chain that you've probably heard of before, and she had a lot of experience working retail. Aside from having to show her the way the store wanted it done, I was pretty much able to just leave her on her own and let her do her job. And she did her job well. But Jake, on the other hand, <laughs> Jake did not like the fact that I was almost 20 years younger than him. At one point, he even requested that someone who knew what they were doing would show him what to do. <laughs> Bitch, why do you think they assigned me to you? Because I know what I'm doing. Just because you're old doesn't give you any credit. Sorry, not sorry. I reminded him that I'd been working in the store for nearly four years at that point, And I did, in fact, know what I was doing. Well, Jake didn't like that response. But I wouldn't know about all that until a bit later. I was forced to work with Jake the entire night as he had no prior retail experience <laughs> and lacked the common sense that you would expect a gnat to be born with. And during this entire time, he talked almost exclusively about his ex-wife and how much he hated her. <laughs> How do you go through like 50 years and never work a retail job? What is this? How is he possibly working retail now? You think he's on the government dole? I think he's probably on the government dole. I couldn't tell you what he talked about specifically because I wisely ignored most of it. But yeah, what I took away is that he really hates his ex. <laughs> uh, 
Things really came to a head during our first truck night. We'd successfully managed to put up a 15 pallet truck with some time to spare, and we're now straightening up the aisles and making the products on the shelf look nice. My manager and I, having known each other for nearly four years at this point, were quite good friends. We talked a lot, sharing stories that we'd both already heard half a dozen times, and would most likely hear another seven or eight times before all was said and done. The key here, though, is that for the last seven months or so, we'd largely been on our own in the store. Being on night shift meant that the two of us were basically alone from the moment that the closing manager left and up until the opening manager arrived. So we'd grown used to saying basically whatever we wanted to each other. <laughs> it was during my retelling of one of these stories that I said the phrase, this fucking bitch. <laughs> now this was not directed at anyone in the store. In fact, this was me retelling a story about a friend from my childhood who I'm still very much friends with. Jake did not like my cursing, and he said as much. Hey, Kenred, there's a woman present. You know, you, you really shouldn't be using that kind of language. Realizing that Jake could actually be correct, I turned to Ricky, and I apologized. She responded by saying, Oh, that didn't bother me at all. I probably cuss just as much as he does. I accepted her response and turned to Jake. See, Jake? There's nothing to worry about. She said she doesn't mind. And then I went back to telling my story, but it was again interrupted by Jake. I'm just saying, even if she's okay with it, you still shouldn't be saying that kind of stuff around her. It's not something that a gentleman should do. <laughs> yeah, slandering his ex-wife the entire night. This dude is the pinnacle of chivalry. <laughs> now, I never claimed to be a gentleman. Not once. I could be nice when it was called for, but I was in fact a dick most of the time. <laughs> and regardless of who you were, I basically took you at face value. If you said you were okay with something, then yeah, you were okay with something. If later on you had an issue about it, then you'd have to tell me. Otherwise, I'm going to keep holding you at your word, like a normal person would do. <laughs> I will try to change how I act accordingly, but I've never been one to try and protect people from something that they say they're okay with. Ricky, as a grown woman, understandably didn't like Jake telling us that we should ignore what she had said because he didn't think it was proper. I literally just said I didn't give a shit. So why are you trying to defend someone's honor who honestly doesn't fucking care? She told him. And from that moment on, Jake positively hated Ricky. <laughs> yeah, you're going in the ex-wife bin, Ricky. <laughs> And I mean, he hated her with a level of vitriol that was just wildly uncalled for. He began to treat both her and myself as lepers, having little to do with either of us, and even refusing to speak so long as Ricky was in the room. Oh, God, is all this on the first night? <laughs> we can let him go like the next day, right? This is obviously not going to work out. <laughs> and in my case... He tried to intimidate me into acting as he wanted, which was never going to work. But that's a story for another time. Personally, Ricky and I didn't really care. We missed out on nothing from having him refuse to talk to us. In fact, it was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, blessed silence, man. Silence is golden. I quickly realized that Ricky had a lot in common with me, and we became fast friends which only served to infuriate Jake even more. Jake started spreading rumors about Ricky. Yeah, she was a whore, and she was sleeping around, and she was cheating on her boyfriend, and she was a bitch who, who was just mean to everyone for no reason. <laughs> uh, oh, have you ever met a catty or 50-year-old man? <laughs> this is so sad. Uh, I remind you, <laughs> see, OP says, this is a 50-year-old man saying all this stuff about a 26-year-old woman who 
He doesn't fucking know from Eve. But because she had the gall to talk back to him, he felt justified in saying whatever he wanted about her. The store became something of a cold war. My manager ended up becoming friends, and I use that term very loosely, with Jake, well, I became friends with Ricky. Oh, so he's not going to get fired. <laughs> That's unfortunate. But also, it, it leads to a glorious saga, so I can't be too mad about it. Anytime Jake would see Ricky and I talking, he would run off and tell our manager in a fruitless attempt to try and get us into trouble. Oh my god, I can't believe they're talking. I better go tattletale. <laughs> Jake is seriously bitch made. I hate this dude already. Here's the thing. Ricky and I would only start talking if we were already done for the night. We would have maybe 30 minutes left on the clock with very little to do, so we would meet up on an aisle, and while we were straightening up, we would talk. We weren't meeting up secretly, and we weren't hiding from anyone. In fact, we would often stand directly in front of the security cameras while we talked. Jake didn't care. He was so sure that he could get us into trouble, somehow, <laughs> that he constantly tried to report us to management. Side note. Even the store director took our side in this, so it never got anywhere. But that didn't stop old Jakey boy. And I do mean old Jakey boy. <laughs> this is already getting long, and I'm going to have to make this story multiple parts, but I wanted to end off with the time that I found out Jake had been purposefully intimidating Ricky because he thought it was funny. Probably the only person in the world that he's able to intimidate. Ah, oh, he just gets sadder by the sentence. <laughs> Ricky and I had been on the baked goods aisle. This was like five days before Thanksgiving, and so she had a lot more product than she normally did. As I had finished first, I went over there to help her. While I was working on her aisle, we chatted, as we normally did. I had just finished stocking a box of syrup, I think, when I stand up and look towards the far end of the aisle. And Jake is just standing there with a scowl on his face and he was staring directly at ricky ricky hadn't seen him yet but she did a few moments later and right after she saw him jake left <laughs> the, the grocery creeper stock beard because it's like s-t-o-c-k and also s-t-a-l-k stock stalker beard <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting for sure. I asked how long that had been going on, and she responded by saying it had been going on for a couple of weeks. I asked why she hadn't told me about it, or told anyone about it. Some minor background on Ricky. She suffers from severe anxiety and doesn't like causing a scene. Hates causing a scene, as a matter of fact. And she told me that she didn't mention it because, as she said, she was used to creepy old guys doing creepy weird old guy shit. <laughs> and since it hadn't escalated past staring, she was just waiting for the right moment to bring it up to management. But in my opinion, what Jake was doing was already harassment. Plain and simple. You got it, OP. And if nothing else, that goes against store policy and could get the store sued. Never mind the mental implications that it could be having on Ricky. I would probably put the mental implications before the store getting sued <laughs> if we're going in order of importance. Who gives a shit if the store gets sued? Okay, they provide a job, but really, company loyalty is a fucking joke. <laughs> I told Ricky that I would make sure that Jake stopped, and then I went and found our manager. And I told him, in no uncertain terms, what Jake had been doing, and that the manager needed to tell Jake to stay the hell away from Ricky. If I caught him doing it again, then I'd go to the store director about it. Our manager hadn't even realized that Jake was doing it, and he agreed with me. This needed to stop. The manager passed along the message and asked why the hell he'd been doing it in the first place. And Jake's response was to say, Oh, I, I'm only doing it because I know it creeps her out. Bro, that is so out of line. Like, creepy old man has never been creepier. You know that it's creepy and you continue to do it because it's creepy? 
Oh my god. What? Oh, and Jake didn't stop, by the way. Oh, he stopped being so overt about it, but he continued to do sneaky shit, like trash talking us behind our backs and trying to turn the other employees against us. Also a story for another time. Finally, our manager took it to the store director, who wrote Jake up for it, but otherwise didn't do anything. And from that moment on, he downright refused to speak to either Ricky or myself, which was just fine with us. <laughs> oh God, self-entitlement check, delusions of grandeur check. It looks like we got a gray beard here, people. And he is an absolute specimen. Something different than what we normally see, because usually beards are like so bumbling and socially oblivious that they don't realize completely what they're doing is creepy. And this guy is doing creepy things on purpose. I'd really like to dig further into his head. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into part two. I'm hooked. <laughs> I hope you guys are as well. So uh, let's check it out. The Tale of Jake from Philadelphia, part two. <laughs> These titles need help though, man. OP's a good writer. I'd, I'd just like the title to have a little more kick, if you don't mind. Welcome to part two of The Tale of Jake. <laughs> Stalker beard, as I call him. Most of this information was learned in the three months between when he was hired and when he finally stopped talking to me with some of it coming from our manager, who Jake basically told everything. So, here's the thing. Despite Jake's award-winning personality, he is single. Oh, so single. <laughs> I can't imagine why this man is forever alone. But this is not from a lack of trying on Jake's part. He tries everything that he can to impress the women around him, even going so far as changing the way he walks to make it look like he's this a giant bodybuilder. To his credit, he is fairly tall, around 5 foot 10, but heavily muscled, he is not. <laughs> that doesn't stop him from swinging his arms and rotating his shoulders in what I can only assume is a spot-on impersonation of a gorilla walking on two legs. <laughs> It's honestly the funniest thing, especially since he only walks that way when he's around women. Teenage, middle-aged, married, gay, Jake doesn't care. If you're a woman, Jake needs to impress you. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's taking on all comers, all those prospects out there. I know for a fact that it's all an act because whenever it was just guys on shift, he walked completely normal. No shoulder swinging, no puffed out chest, nothing. He just walks with his head down and his eyes glued to his phone. Speaking of which, Jake is a member of, to my knowledge, OkCupid, okay Plenty of Fish, Christian Mingle, Tinder, eHarmony, Farmers Only, <laughs> Farmers Only, and Bumble. I think that's all of them, bro. <laughs> if you frequent any of these sites, you may have stumbled across him and swiped left without even knowing it. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> uh, saved by the swipe. In spite of mine and our manager's best efforts to stop him, Jake was catfished at least eight times in those three months. <laughs> and they were like obvious catfish as well. Among the women used to scam him were Eva Mendez, Jennifer Aniston, Christina Aguilera, Cameron Diaz, and Carrie Underwood. And those are just the ones that I remember. <laughs> that is the worst catfish in the world, dude. I'm not saying you should catfish people, but if you chose to, why would you pick somebody famous? <laughs> and, and on top of that, why would you fall for it? Well, I guess because Jake's an idiot. He's out of his depth with online dating. When I told him that they were just people trying to scam him out of his money, Jake replied by saying, I'm not stupid. I'm not gonna fall for those scams. But look how gorgeous they are. And they like me. I think you're just jealous because you can't pull women like I can. <laughs> uh, are you kidding, dude? 
Does making a match on Tinder count as polling women? <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, Jake, that's exactly why. You caught me. I am just oh so envious. <laughs> I probably don't need to tell you what happened next, but I'm going to anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Jake was convinced by Jennifer Aniston <laughs> to buy $700 worth of iTunes gift cards so that she could use them to purchase a plane ticket to come and see him. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston's fallen on some hard times. <laughs> Eva Mendez convinced Jake to send her $300 worth of Google Play gift cards to pay her phone bill. So she could continue to speak with him. But oh, that's a hefty phone bill. <laughs> I forget the rest, but by Christmas, he'd sent a little over five grand to the various women that he was speaking to. Ah, oh, God, that's kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, it is hard to find sympathy for the guy. I dislike neckbeards immensely, but I dislike scammers just that little bit more. And he's just the old dude on the internet. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> Uh, OP tried to save him. OP's a good guy, but god damn, you can't save people from their self. When our manager discovered all this, he was understandably concerned. He sat Jake down and tried to talk him out of sending them any more money. But despite already being ghosted by two of these women, Jake was still convinced that the others were real. <laughs> uh, our manager googled Carrie Underwood to show Jake whose picture they were using. And his response was, Oh, so she's rich, huh? That's great. But hey, if she has that much money, then why did she need money from me? She didn't, Jake. Somebody was using her picture to scam you, our manager told him. Nah, you're, you're wrong. She wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh... Oh, but don't feel sorry for him. He was talking to three of them at the same time, and he told all of them that he loved them and wanted nothing more than to move them all in with him. Yes, his plan was to move three women in with him at the same time and be in a relationship with all of them. <laughs> yeah, why disappoint just one woman? <laughs> if they weren't scamming him, I honestly would have felt sorry for him. Not only was he, like, cheating on all of them, but his views on a woman's place are rather messed up. I was once telling our manager of a cult I'd read something about online. The women there, whether they were married or not, were the personal property of the cult leader. They ate when he told them to. They worked when he told them to. They slept when and with who he told them to. Jake overheard this conversation and responded with, as it should be. Uh, <laughs> what do you even say to that? Anyways, his downright inane attempts to get with a woman doesn't stop there. Though God, I wish that they did. <laughs> you see, Jake liked younger women, like in the 17 to 25 year range. So whenever he had the chance, he would find his way to the front of the store and bug any cashier that he could, during which he'd lean over their register and casually stretch his neck while remarking on how sore he was from working out. <laughs> Side note, Jake has this perpetual odor around him. It basically smells like he bathes in Axe body spray. You can smell him long before you see him, and this was known among the entire staff. So when he leaned over the register to speak with the cashiers, inevitably someone would need their assistance and they would be called away. And Jake never realized why. <laughs> However, Jake did get lucky once. He met a woman on Farmers Only who lived only 30 miles from our store. Jake was so excited to have a date that he even told me about it and showed damn near everyone in the store her picture, and also told them when and where they were going on their date. So you know that it's totally real for reals. <laughs> now, this next part came solely from our manager, as Jake didn't talk about this woman ever again. 
Jake regaled our manager with his experience on the date. The woman came to pick Jake up at his house because Jake had never seen a need to get his license or buy a car. At 50? <laughs> oh, God, dude. Jake immediately told this woman that he would rather drive her car to their date because he didn't trust a woman to drive him anywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, I don't even know what to do with this guy at this point. Bro, somehow the date did not end there. Oh, this woman needs to get some more self-respect. They went to dinner, which the woman was forced to pay for because Jake couldn't afford the food that he had ordered and then ate. <laughs> it was on the way home from the date that Jake told the woman that he expected her to sell her house soon and move in with him. <laughs> Understandably, the woman told him, uh, no. So Jake threw a temper tantrum, <laughs> calling her a fucking bitch, and then demanded that she take him home <laughs> and not message him again. <laughs> uh, which she did. Oh boy, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> However, as bad as all this was, this isn't the reason that Jake stopped talking about her. He stopped talking about her because she really didn't message him later. He honestly expected an apology from her. Yeah, no idea why he's still single. <laughs> More to come in part three. It gets worse. <laughs> God, <laughs> I don't know how much worse it can get, man. The level of control that this guy expects to have over women's lives is just insane. He's a loser who works in a fucking grocery store stocking shelves at 50 years old. He doesn't have a car and he's like, yeah, you got to sell your house and move in with me, bitch. <laughs> On the first date, are you out of your mind? The answer to that is, yeah, <laughs> he definitely is. Jesus Christ, dude. I didn't know what I was getting when I dove into the story, but I need more. I need more. It's so well written. I really enjoy it. It's got a little bit of everything. Fail dates, neck beard on the job, creepy old man doing creepy old man things. <laughs> what else could you ask for, honestly? I was a little bit skeeved out when OP is like, oh yeah, he likes women that are like 17 to 25, but like... Is anybody really surprised that he would totally do shit with an underage girl? Because I'm not. Do I really even need to say that that is not cool? Very un-okay? I don't think I do. Probably my favorite part is when he's like self-identifying with the cult leader. He's like, yeah, all that horrible shit happened. That's as it should be. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't have a response. I'm sure OP didn't have a response. Who could possibly formulate a response to that in the moment. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, we're definitely coming back to Jake. This is a killer series. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around if you should like. This is uh, gonna be a winner. I feel it. And this is the first video in the series so you can get people in on the ground floor. Ooh, that's a big brain play. <laughs> We also got some links in the descriptions, all kinds of plugs, and also my social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all, so thank you very much. Calvicus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Aaron W., Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdala Marshall, Thornrose, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mal, Rouse Tower, Satori, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, OG James Cook, A Pimp Named Jay Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Lord Lion O, Melgar the Destroyer, Murphy, Full Baker, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nicks, or Gamey Steve, Katie Kins, Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Eyes, Siegfried, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Mags, Redwind, Gooses Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Normal Joe, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry. <laughs> 
KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Little Ann Woods, Mark211, maybe next time, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Orgay McCam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Steampunk Ellie, and the last, Shinobi. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel in the way that you do. It means the world to me. I hope that some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon. That is always appreciated, but if you can't do it right now, friends, don't sweat it too hard. I just appreciate you coming on through and hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe uh, watching some more Red X videos. Maybe. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.